Luke, what do you think? I mean, are you in any of this uh, debt? And does the negative yield mean anything on the corporate level if it doesn't mean that much um, on the on the government level? I, I think it's really interesting moves on the corporate side. You know, that Nestle 10-year negative is a really big indicator of where we could be going for an awful lot of the European corporate bond market. As a sterling investor, buying euro bonds, I actually get a nice pickup because of the FX uh, benefit of doing it. So, you know what, I can add 100, 120 basis points onto any European corporate bond when I'm looking at it in sterling terms. So there are some opportunities there, but right at the moment, sterling market is so cheap, um, there's no point me going and chasing down in Europe. Saying all of that, I think if I was a corporate in Europe at the moment, borrowing a 10-year debt in negative territory, I boost my free cash flow numbers pretty aggressively. That sounds like a pretty decent thing to do and, and actually may push yields back up a little bit from, from a supply perspective. But it's August, you know, they're all on holiday in, in, in August in Europe. We've seen very little issuance in the European corporate market, a lot in the US, very, very little in Europe. Um, so, so there's clearly no indication that the corporate bond uh, issuers are going down that road yet. But I think once once they all come back in September, we can expect a flood of new issuance in the European corporate bond market. What does negative, uh, what does negative debt mean to you? I mean, Joe Wiesenthal, the, the stalwart uh, tweeting a lot about negative debt in recent days and really triggering a lot of reactions. Um, is it a bad thing? Is it, uh, Maria Feitmana yesterday was telling us she thinks it's dangerous long-term because it leads to misallocation of capital. What's your take? Uh, for sure. But I think it also depends on where the real returns are being made. Now, as soon as you've been into negative real returns, which actually a lot of the real inflation-linked markets been in negative returns for a long time uh, versus in inflation rates, that's where you get into problem. Now, if you're getting a negative, negative interest rate, but you're going to start seeing much, much lower inflation or negative inflation, I'm not sure it matters too much. That doesn't seem, unfortunately, where we're going. I completely agree with the long-term misallocation of capital problem. If companies start issuing debt to boost their free cash flow because they're receiving an interest benefit, that's not a particularly healthy place to be in terms of what they're going to do with that money. You know, maybe we're going to get a wave of M&A that suggests, you know, you're doing it for the wrong reasons. You're finding the money cheap to get. In fact, you're being paid to borrow. So we may as well go and do M&A. And that can be value destructive pretty quickly. What do you expect the ECB um, to do here? I mean, a lot of talk about uh, QE be getting restarted. Are they going to make the problem then worse, Luke? Yeah, yeah, they are. And, and this is why you need to be long duration, you need to be long credit, uh, at least for the next four, five, maybe even six months. It's technical. There's no fundamental reason to be long that kind of risk at the moment in credit. Um, that you know, you're getting towards the end of a very long period of growth. Recession could be coming along, but the ECB are going to be there having your back. The Bank of England, I think, are going to be there having your back come early November. And even the the US the US Fed, I think, to some degree, will be reopening those kind of programs of extraordinary stimulus. So, you know, we could get nine billion a month of corporate bond buying out of the ECB very, very quickly come September. All right, very